Chris Petrie here. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming by. We're painting here. We're having a great time. This is an Extreme Beginner Series video. We're doing not one, not two, not three, but four paintings, four compositions. So this way, as you're going through and working along with me, it doesn't matter if your boat doesn't come out good. You're going right next, uh, you know, right next door here and doing some beautiful trees or a cottage or some flowers. So it doesn't matter if any of these paintings don't come out to your liking and you, you don't have an, uh, an easy time doing any one of these, no problem. You're working on four of these paintings in this video. So your uh, chances are you're not going to worry about whether one or two or you're having issues or problems with your watercolors. No worries. Let's do all four of these. Have a great time with it. Enjoy the process. We cover all the details of each one of these compositions. And the key is keep working on one to the next. Don't worry about getting hung up on one. If one doesn't come out good, you're moving to the next one. If this doesn't come out good, you're moving to the next one. Okay, that's the key to watercolor. Keep moving, keep working on it. You're going to get better and better each week, each month, and every year. So stick with me on my channel week after week, month after month, and year after year. You're going to get great at watercolors, and you're going to keep improving constantly. And this is how it works. We will cover four compositions here on this video. Let's get started. We'll get started with the first one, which is my favorite one of all of them, a beautiful boat scene here with some mountains, some seagulls, some water, some mountains. Let's have a great time, okay? We'll be right back. All right, Chris Petri here. Thanks so much for coming by. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for uh, painting along and drawing, drawing and painting along with me here on this uh, gorgeous uh, Day. We're going to do some beautiful watercolor paintings. So let's start out. We're going to do four paintings actually in one video. And I think the key to this video is let's get a, a grouping of paintings done so that you can kind of move from one to the next and not get bogged down with, let's say, just one composition or one painting. You're going to want to move through each painting, uh, you know, in a good uh, uh, pace in a short amount of time, so we're not going to be spending hours on one painting. We're going to spend maybe like a half an hour uh, on each painting, on each composition, and they're a little bit smaller. So let's take a look here. You saw the finished painting in the beginning of the video, so I always try to put the finished paintings in the beginning of the video so you can kind of see what we're going to do here on the, on the video, on the tutorial uh, beforehand, so you kind of feel comfortable, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is what's going to be the finished product when we're done. So let's let's kind of uh, drill down on the details now of how we're going to get to uh, each of the finished paintings. So first thing I do is I took a, a large sheet of uh, paint paper here. This is a... I'm trying to find my, my cut sheets here. Uh, I always try to have some cut sheets with me. So this is the... We're going to use Fabriano. 9 by 12 studio watercolor paper. So this is the paper I'm using right now. So what I've done is I've taken this paper and I've put it, uh, put tape on it and, and kind of created four spaces, four sections. So I just kind of split it in half and then split it in half this way. And then you can see here I just have some uh, printer paper on the bottom so that I don't splash on the other bottom portion of the paper. So I can kind of like make sure that paper at the bottom here is uh, safe and doesn't get splashed on and you know uh, it gets you know smudges of paint and things like that so that's why I have that covered with some printer paper but basically we have our Fabriano studio watercolor paper sectioned off in a cross hair which is you know four just halfway this way halfway this way and that ends up being about if we have a ruler here it's uh, six inches by five inches, or if you're working in the uh, metric system, it's 12 centimeters by about 16 centimeters high. And that's basically the size of each of our um, compositions we're going to work in. So the first one we're going to do is a nice little beautiful boat and sitting inside of a harbor, inside of a nice little harbor scene. Let's get started.
first thing I'll do is I'll take a uh, 0 .0, 0 0.7 millimeter pencil, retractable pencil. I like to use these retractables, they work great. And then we'll take our uh, paper and we'll say, okay, how are we going to divide up the sections in this? And let's say if this is halfway, if this is halfway up, up from the bottom, halfway, and this is the other half to the top, let's say we'll go a little bit below the halfway point. That'll be our um, uh, distant uh, brush and weeds behind the boat. So our boat's going to sit right here. So then here I go across and I say, where do I want my boat? Well, exactly halfway is here. Uh, let's make our boat a little bit over to the right. We don't want to go maybe exactly halfway. Let's go a little bit to the right. So this is halfway. We'll go a little bit to the right and then we'll make our boat there. And we'll just make a simple boat right like this. Like this. And then we'll take the boat and go this way. Like that. And that's pretty much our boat. And then we'll make our mast. You can also take a ruler if you want to make your mast for your boat, your sailboat here. Like this. Like that. And you can also erase a little bit if you have to. Maybe uh, we'll, we'll make this a little bit smaller. So let's make our mast a little bit smaller and it gets a little bit thinner here. Like that. Perfect. Then we'll make a cross member here. And we'll just cut a couple pencil lines just to kind of denote some rigging lines, but I think that's fine just like that. A couple of rigging lines, our mast here, straight up, vertical, with a ruler. If you want to use a ruler, you can kind of get that really nice straight vertical line with your ruler, like I did there. And then you could do this freehand and do a couple rigging lines freehand like that, and you're really all set. And that's all you need. And then you've got your boat. And then we'll do our cabin that's on our boat here. Like this. Like that. That's our cabin. A little bit of a shadow over here. Like that. And we are in great shape. So look, we've got the... That's the horizon line or the... Um, level line of the water. Then we have some bushes behind here. Then we'll have a little bit of a mountain back here. Like that. Some mountainous, you know, hills behind. And then we have a little bit of uh, shadowing and reflections of the boat here. like that, and a little bit of the reflections of the mast, and maybe a little bit of the rigging too, like that. Simple enough to sketch and draw. You've seen how I've done this here. Let's go over with a darker pencil line. So what I'm going to do is just go over with a darker pencil line now, so you can kind of see how I did this. Okay, that's the shore line, the water that meets the shore. And then we have some weeds and trees in the background here. Then we have a little bit of a mountainous area back here. And then we have our mast, like that, with some rigging, light rigging, like so. Then we have the bottom of the boat here, the bow of the boat here, the reflection in the water, Reflection of these weeds and uh, shoreline here in the water, a reflection here, and a little bit of the reflection of the, 
the mast up here in the water and some rigging. And, I, and that's it. You're all set. You have your sailboat all set up here. You have your cabin on your sailboat. A little bit of shadow over here. And you're all set. Okay, let's paint this now. But before we paint, let's take a quick break. It's always good to take breaks. You'll always hear me say that on my videos. Take a quick break after you're done with your pencil drawing. You know, five, ten minutes really, really helps. You'll come back to your drawing and you might say, oh, you know what, I need to do a little change or something like that, or I need to adjust something, or you might not say anything like that. You might say, oh, wow, looks great. I don't need to change anything. I'm going to go right in and start painting. So as an artist, you want to give yourself some breaks, relax, and then you come back to your sketch, your, your drawing, and look at it and say, does that look pleasing, pleasant, good? I'm ready to paint. Or you might say, oh, you know what, I did need to do a little adjustments on my drawing. And then at that point you can do maybe a, an adjustment or two on your drawing if you need to, only if you need to. If it looks good, don't worry about it. Just go right in and start painting, okay? So let's take a break and then we'll start painting this. And it's going to go quick. You're going to have fun with this. I'm so thankful you're here because this is an extreme beginner's video. We're just having fun here. We're doing some compositions and this is all about watercolor, learning watercolor. If you're in a beginner, you're going to be doing lots of these style paintings, just co small compositions. And if you're doing small compositions like this, you're going to have a lot of fun and you're going to learn a lot about watercolor and how to like work with the medium because it's not easy. So let's just have fun and enjoy it. And, uh, you know, after a little bit of practice, maybe, you know, half a year to a year of practicing these little compositions as we go, about a year later, you're going to really be getting it and you're going to start to really feel like, wow, I understand watercolor. I'm getting it. I see how it works. I'm getting a feel for the paints, for the water, the paper, the washes, everything. So it all comes together after about a year. So don't worry about it. Your first year is all about just learning the basic fundamentals of watercolor. Okay, so never get frustrated if in the beginning, your first six months or eight months or whatever, even if your first year, if you're doing some compositions like this and they're not coming out good, don't worry about it. Just keep working at it, finish your painting, move on to the next one and so on and so forth. Okay, great. Okay, so let's come right back. We'll get some uh, paint ready here. We'll do some spritzing of our paints. Our Prang Oval 16 set. We're going to have our brushes ready to go. So I have my uh, Prang Oval 16 stock brush that I have that comes with this set. You might be able to just do with that, you know, without any other brushes. But I also use a um, Sim, Simply Simmons number, number uh, six, which is a little bit larger of a round brush like that. You can kind of see how the hairs are a little bigger. So I think between these these two brushes, we should be fine. We'll, we'll be able to do this painting, you know, 100%, finish it, get it done, and have a wonderful time of it. Okay, so let's come right back and we'll start the painting. All right, let's get back into it and let's do our painting portion of this first composition. Now, the first part of the drawing, <clears throat> excuse me, it might have been a little blurry, I apologize. Sometimes when I set up my camera on my videos on YouTube here, just once in a while, I forget to uh, get a really crisp, clear focus with my camera, with my zoom, my zoom lens. So don't worry about that. You kind of saw how we did the, the drawing for the most part. That's fine. But now I'm in crystal clear focus. So you'll be able to see everything really, really, really nicely right now. You see my drawing here. Again, just to cover it, we did the shoreline here where, where the water meets the land. So the land is here and there's some bushes and uh, shrubs and things like this behind the boat. And then there's some mountains back here. Then we did our boat shape here with our cabin on top of the boat. And it's a beautiful cabin cruiser with a sail and mast here. So we have a sail and a mast set up. And then some reflections in the water but for, for our boat and the land. And we have some reflections 
here for our mast in the water. And that's all you really need to really kind of capture as far as pencil, the pencil drawing goes. And I'm using the 0 0.7 millimeter Pentel mechanical pencil, and it's a Pentel 120A3DX 0 0.7 millimeter. So that's the mechanical pencil I use, and these are really great. This is a little bit of a finer point pencil. Sometimes you'll see me use a 0 0.9, same brand, same make, everything here, same thing, Pentel 120 A3DX, but this one's a 0 0.9 millimeter, a little bit of a thicker and heavier lead on the uh, tip here. So this is a little bit of a thicker line, a little bit of a darker line when you're dr drawing, but this is a smaller composition, so I'll use the blue. These are color-coded, and that's why I really like these Pentel mechanical pencils, because I know I don't even have to look at any of the, um, you know, I don't have to look at any of the specifications on my mechanical pencil. I just know, bam, I got to grab a blue one. I got to grab my blue mechanical pencil if I'm doing a smaller pencil drawing. If I'm doing a larger pencil drawing, like on a really large sheet of paper, well, then I'm going to grab my uh, golden color um, pencil, mechanical pencil, which happens to be the 0 0.9 millimeter. Okay. So I just mentioned that because, you know, sometimes when you're working in watercolor and you're drawing and you're kind of at a fast pace and you're, you know, want to get things done and you're excited, you might forget about what pencil is the best for which, which drawing. You can always just remember blue is for the smaller compositions and then your gold mechanical pencil by Pentel is your larger paint, your larger compositions where you're going to be needing a thicker pencil line. Okay. That's all that is. Just wanted to mention that so we have, uh, you know, a clear understanding of the different colors. They make these pencils this way for that simple reason that they know you're an artist. You need to grab your pencil quick and you need to start drawing. You don't want to start fumbling around and having to read the different, uh, you know, sizes of lead on your pencils, your, your mechanical pencils. So right away you just know blue is when you're doing a smaller composition and then your gold is when you're doing a larger composition. So we're using the blue right now for this drawing. And so we have our drawing done. Let's get right into it. Start painting. We'll mix up some colors. So that's the first thing we do when we're doing, if you're an extreme beginner, just starting out and welcome. If you've just, if you've just landed here on my channel for the first time, thank you for coming by. I welcome you. Extreme Beginner series that I do on YouTube is a special uh, series because really what I do is I, I try to make sure I'm explaining the basics of watercolor painting for you so that you don't get, uh, you know, confused or uh, burdened with uh, too many details. Some channels might throw you a thousand different details, but they don't explain the very, very basics of things. That's why I'm here. With the Extreme Beginner series, we're going to go with the very basics. We got our basic pencil drawing down. We're good to go. Next thing we do, we have our paint set here, our uh, Prang Oval 16 set. Basically, you can get this at any, it's, you know, you can get this online on Amazon. You just type in Prang Oval 16 on Amazon. You order this and you have it in your house in like two days. Amazon will deliver this to your house in like two days. It's got all the colors you need right here. The only thing is I change my colors and move them around. So I pull these all out. See how this, I can pull these, I can pull these out of the palette and then snap them back in. So if you type in to YouTube, Chris Petri palette, you'll find my Prang Oval 16 video, which tells you exactly how you're going to snap these all out and put them in a certain order. You can see I have all the reds and yellows and golds and green on this side. And then all my really cool colors, greens and blues and purples on this side. So I have my palette set up in a specific way. I want you to set your palette up the same way that I have mine set up. I think it's a logical way to set up your palette so that you always know when you're painting, if you're going with warmer colors, you're over on this side. If you're going with your cooler blues and greens, you're over here for the most part. So that's the main thing I wanted to just mention about colors and taking your palette 
and setting it up this way, which is the way I have my colors uh, s sitting inside of my palette, my Prang Oval 16 palette. So I'm hoping you'll type in Chris Petri, and it's really simple. My name is very simple, C-H-R-I-S, P-E-T-R-I, if you type that into YouTube. And then on the after you type Chris Petri, you type palette, P-A-L-L-E-T-T-E, -E, Chris Petri palette, you'll see that within the first couple videos, you'll, you'll see that I have the Prang Oval 16 video, which describes how I set up my palette for this Prang Oval 16. Okay, now, next thing is, let's start mixing our colors. The first thing you want to do as a beginner is mix your colors ahead of time. Saves you so much a headache. You don't want to be mixing colors a little bit at a time and then say, oh my God, uh, what colors do I mix? What do I do? I'm in the middle of my painting. Figure out everything in the beginning and then you're good to go. So let's do it. First thing you do is you say, okay, my boat is like a bluish purple. So I get my bluish purple here. That's my boat. Always remember, as an extreme beginner, you're going to want to have a sponge or a paper towel or a tissue to dry off your brush once you rinse your brush off every time. So every time you go into your water color or when you go into your uh, bucket with your water, so if, even if we take our glass here, so this is like a glass that we have, and we'll fill that up with water. So if you have your water bucket or your water, your glass with, you know, you have like a little heavy bottom glass with some water in it, and then you have your sponge next to that, you always want to rinse your brush and go to your sponge and dry off a little bit of water. Then you go to your palette and you get your colors like this. That's all you have to remember. Okay, so we have blue. Okay, that's for the boat. Then you have some greens. We'll use both greens here. A darker green and a lighter green here. Mix that in there. Then you add a touch of brown. And what that does is it makes it like an olivey green, a warmer green. You're adding a warmer color like brown, earthy, an earthy color to your greens. And look how beautiful that looks. It's more of an earthy, olivey green versus these type of greens, which are a little bit lighter and cooler. So that's all you have to remember. Add a touch of brown to your greens, and you will see how wonderful those greens look. They get to be an olivey green, which is perfect for what we're looking for here. And then also... In the mountains section, we're going to want to add some blue to that green. And you can kind of see how we made a little bit of a bluish green here. And that's the distant mountain colors. And I think that's the colors we need for this painting. And you'll be set. All you need now is just maybe rinse off your brush, dry off a little bit of the brush on your sponge or your paper towel or your tissue and then you go in and you say all right I'm going to need some orange brown and yellow like this to get yourself like a like a ah, beautiful like a yellow ochre so you want a yellow ochre color like that so ah you make a beautiful yellow ochre color with your brown yellow and a little bit of orange and look at how beautiful that looks that's an, like a raw sienna or yellow a uh, yellow ochre okay so now you have all your colors you need for this painting right here now let's start the painting that you have your colors all mixed and ready to go i'll move my paint up here a little bit and my sponge up here just so we can see the whole painting but we're going to basically use these colors and uh, let's start out with our blue for our boat. There we go. And if you need to get a little bit more richer color, you go straight into the palette with the straight color. Like that. Maybe a little bit of brown. 
mixed in with that blue to give yourself a little bit of a darker blue. Now, let's get a light blue for the other side. So I rinse off my brush, tap off some water on the sponge or a paper towel, and then we do our light blue over here for the other side of our boat, which has some light on it. You can also lift up a little bit of the paint with your paper towel or tissue just to lighten it up if you add a little too much water. And then we always say, you know, here on my channel, I'm always mentioning constantly harping on the basics of things. Know where your light is. Our light is coming from this side of the painting. So I make my light insignia up here, knowing that the light's coming from this direction, the sunlight, just like that. And if you put that little light insignia on top of your painting, then you'll always refer back to it and say, oh, where's my light coming from? Oh yeah, up here. Yeah, it's coming from this way, going across the picture this way. This way you don't get confused on where your shadows and your light effects are going to be. So let's make sure we have that. And then we just lighten that up. Okay. Then let's get right into our greens. Like that. Then we'll add a little bit of blue to the green. We're going to make our And you can see that for my shadows, for my reflection and shadows underneath this boat, I'm just reflecting down the same dark and light that I'm seeing above. So if, you're a, if your boat is darker, a darker blue up here, it's going to be a darker reflection here in the water. And then you can see here the boat's lighter on this side over here on the right side and you want to make sure you keep your reflection in the water lighter for this over here. Then you could take a little more um, water and then I just do this. I put plenty of water on my brush pick up a little bit of that, what, what I would call Viridian Green, which is a very uh, cool green. You could almost call it like a um, turquoise green. And then I just add that with plenty of water to the section here below, just like this. Okay. And that's all I did there. And then you could even add some I added some of that olivey green to the water just so that it kind of harmonizes the colors. And that looks pretty good. Now we're going to go here and then we'll use some of this yellow ochre color with a little bit of the blue and then we're going to do some shadowing here on the on the boat And there we have it. I take the water, rinse off the brush, dry off the water on the sponge, so I have just a damp brush at this point. And then I kind of just, you know, 
kind of melt all of these colors together a little bit here and there into the boat. in the shoreline here and these bushes and weeds along the shoreline. And then on top of this here we're going to do the darker tonal value which is olive green and this blue. So we want to have a little bit of that blue and olive green like this. Maybe a little bit of brown, too, like that, and we'll do that. We'll just get some beautiful and I hope you see how simple this is. It's not really rocket science. I'm just getting some washes on there. And then we're going to go up top, rinse off the brush, dry off a little bit of the water on the brush, but we're going to need some extra water on the sky wash. So get some fresh clean water, crystal clear water, and put a little bit of water on the paper here, up here, like that. Some fresh clean water. Then you go in and you grab some of that blue, and you just do some of that blue right across the page like this, touch of brown in there to gray down that blue just a little bit up top. You want to have darker up top on your sky. You always want to have your sky darker on top and then it gets lighter as it goes toward the bottom. And you can see how I do that. And then I rinse off my brush, take off the water, and then just damp brush right along here. Wonderful. Looks great. That's it. You're finished. The only thing we will do next, after this dries 100%, we've been working for 15 or 20 minutes now, and so this is the perfect time to take a break. Let this whole composition now dry 100%. Once it dries 100%, then you're going to do a little bit of detail work on the mast of the boat and some of the rigging and you'll be 100% complete. And we'll also do, we'll also do a little bit of, um, we'll do some uh, reflections in the water of the mast from the boat down here. And that's it, we'll be done. So this is kind of a simple, Straightforward, beautiful boat scene. You can add a little bit of darker wash there if you want, like that. And you can even do, while we're sitting here and we're knowing that we're going to take a break, we can also do a couple windows on our boat, like this like that. So you can do your windows on your boat like that. And you can even do some darker darks up here or over here. Blue, brown, blue and brown, a little bit of maybe orange. You can make a shadow over here and you can also do a little darker dark there. A little bit of splashing. All right.
All right, we've had a lot of fun so far. And we're gonna have more fun just in a second. Let's let this dry though. Okay, let, let this dry 100% and then we'll come in and we'll do our final little details. But you can kind of see this is really coming along beautifully. Let's give it a rest, let it dry 100%. You can use a blow dryer at this point. Hit it with a blow dryer and then uh, you're, you're all set. Or if you want to let it dry a couple hours, you'll be fine too. But either way, you got to let it dry 100% before you go back in and do your details. And we're going to show you how I'm going to use a blow dryer and then we'll come back and we'll do the details and you'll see how we're going to finish this first composition up of a beautiful sailboat here in the harbor. Gorgeous colors, lots of beautiful washes. This is what watercolor is about and I'm sure you're getting a handle on it right away as you're right out of the gates here on my channel, having fun, creating some beautiful paintings and uh, enjoy the journey, okay everyone? And uh, let's get right back into it in just a few minutes when we let this dry, then we're gonna be all set and ready to go to finish up the details of this uh, first painting. Okay. I just used the blow dryer, dried it off this painting right here, this small composition of this beautiful sailboat with a, it's a cabin cruiser, a small cabin cruiser with a, a sailboat rigging. And uh, you can kind of see, I can put my hand on top of it. It's all 100% dry. And uh, let's finish up the details. So maybe I'll use my oval, uh, Prang Oval 16 watercolor brush to do the smaller, finer details. I'll rinse off my brush. I'm going to go in and get some brown, some brown and some yellow, orange, brown, yellow, orange, maybe a little bit of uh, blue and purple here, a little bit of red just to get a little bit of a darker mix there, like that. Then I take my watercolor brush and I uh, pick up some of the darker colors here and I'm just going to do the, the mast. And I just do it in, in, you know, I rest my hand on the paper and I just do it in little small Increments one, one, two, three, like that. That's good. Then I come down here, I do a little reflection, like that. Then I tap off a little bit of the paint, and I want a really light bit of paint here so I can get a little bit of the rigging on the boat, like so. Very light though, so dry off the paint off the brush. Don't have a lot of paint on your brush. And you just kind of do that. Then you get some more paint on the brush. Dry it off on the sponge, and then you want to do your cross members up here. Like that. And then maybe have a little more squiggly lines like this. Dry off the brush and just have a little bit of like that. That's good. Then you might take a little bit of fresh, clean water and maybe just add a little bit of water like this and go back and forth. Like that. A little bit of splashing like that. Okay. If you do some splashes and you don't think they look great, you can just bl blot them right out. Just like that. But I think now you can kind of see how this looks fantastic. A beautiful boat scene and you can do some birds. Let's do some birds. Some seagulls maybe. So I use my brush. I get some of that blue and rust, you know, the yellow, orange and brown, which is kind of like a yellow ochre with a little bit of the blue and purple. 
dry off my brush, and then we'll do a couple seagulls here. Let's do them over here. So we'll do maybe a larger one here, like that. Dry off the brush a lot, so you can make some other ones over here, but very, very lightly. Like that. And there you have it. A couple of beautiful seagulls, maybe one over here too. And that's a finished painting. All right, we're going to come right back and we're going to start our second painting. So let's take a break, refresh ourselves, get a drink, stretch your legs. If you're sitting while you paint, then you'll stand up and do some stretching, uh, walk around a little bit. If you stand while you're painting, then you might want to sit down in a chair and relax a little bit, sit down and Take a load off for a few minutes and then, you know, five, ten minutes and then you come back and we'll continue on and we'll do another uh, composition right here. So stick with me here. Again, we're having lots of fun. The main thing is with watercolor, have tons of fun. And I always mention too, if you're just here for the first time and you haven't painted with me before on YouTube, please subscribe. On the right hand side below, there's a little subscribe button, a little red button. Click the subscribe button. This way you don't lose me. All it will do is the next time you open up YouTube in like, you know, a couple of days or whatever, you'll just see that my new videos uh, will be maybe on your home screen when you open up YouTube. And this way you won't lose track of me. Okay? That's all. This way you kind of stick with us here. We're all working together on watercolors, everything watercolor, whether we're doing boats, flowers, seascapes, landscapes, trees, buildings, uh, city scenes portrait paintings, figure paintings, whatever we're doing, it's always watercolor and it's always the same methods and techniques over and over and over again. As long as you're sticking here every week with us, week after week, month after month, and year after year, you will learn watercolor and you will get really, really good at it. No question. So if you're sticking with us here each week, you're going to get better at your watercolors. You're going to really find that you'll master this medium. It's not easy in the beginning. You're going to have a lot of, let's say, uh, you know, difficulties in the beginning. That's normal. Every watercolor artist goes through the first six months to eight months to a year of difficulties. But then after that, you really start to get the hang of it. So don't get discouraged. Don't throw your paint set out the window with your paper and your pencils and, pa and uh, paints. <laughs> Stick with me. We're going to keep working here week after week, all together, month after month and year after year. We'll get better at painting all, you know, all of us together. So that's the thing. It's a, we're like a team here. Let's work together. Don't worry about it. If it doesn't come out great, your next painting, don't worry. Start your next one over here. And then if this one doesn't come out good, you're going to start your next composition over here. And if that one doesn't come out good, you'll start your next one over here. And then the next week, you're going to just take this whole page, put it to the side, start another group of compositions and you'll just keep doing that. Keep working on them over and over and over again. And by again, six months to a year, you'll have the hang of it. If you're working with us all the time together. Okay. All right. So let me come right back in a second or two and we'll start our second painting. All right. So we're going to come right back, get started here. We're going to begin our second painting. Let's uh, create a beautiful tree uh, along the, um, maybe a lake or some, uh, a bay. So maybe we're in a, we're in a, like a bay or a lake type situation. We have some trees, some mountains, some water. Let's get started. Let's kind of, kind of cover what we're going to do here. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of take our paper. Maybe we'll say, let's, let's split up our paper here into divisions. Let's go halfway. So this is halfway. This is three quarters. This is a hundred percent, three quarters, halfway, one quarter of the way up. This is the bottom. So let's say if we go from the bottom up one quarter, this would be half, three quarters, a hundred percent up here. Let's say, uh, let's go about uh, a quarter of the way, maybe a little bit under a quarter of the way. 
let's maybe get a little bit of a shoreline going like that. Perfect. Now, uh, once we go up here, let's go up about halfway. So we have our halfway point, which is our hash mark here. Let's make that our mountain. So we'll make our mountain over here. Like that. And the rest is going to be sky wash up here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to actually kind of take a, um, a quick uh, assessment here and say, well, we're going to make a couple trees in this uh, uh, painting here. So we're going to kind of focus in on some beautiful trees that we're going to paint in this uh, landscape style painting. How are we going to uh, create those trees? Where are we going to put them? Well, if this is halfway across the paper, so if we make a halfway point here, a center point, that's halfway across the paper, center, here. Let's make this painting a little bit interesting. Let's take the center point here and we'll make our first tree a little bit off center over here. And then we'll just take that and we'll just make the, the tree, oh, a happy old little tree up there. It's going to come up here like that. We'll make some happy branches like this, like that. Have fun with this. Don't worry about it. Just make some happy tree trunk in the tree here, like that. And then let's make uh, one more over here. And I kind of just dance my pencil around and say, okay, let's make one more tree over here. And we'll kind of bring this one up here. It's a little smaller, like that. Like that. And we'll have one more here. Halfway, and I go over more in this way. And we'll just do that. And you have a couple happy branches going downwards here and there, like that. But the most of them go upwards, like that. And we're going to paint those in with our brush, the uh, branches. But this here is basically we're going to do, we're just doing trees. We're going to do some beautiful. Uh, we're going to do a tree composition here. We're going to do a little bit of water, so we're going to have some reflections of our trees down into the water here. So we're going to kind of. It's going to be similar to our boat painting that we did here. So we're kind of working similar. We're going to do the boat painting style of water here underneath our trees, the same as the boat with the water underneath the trees here, the same as the boat with the water underneath the boat. Now we have water underneath the trees, so you're going to want to make those reflections of the trees underneath. Just very, very minimal. Don't sweat it. Just get a little bit of marks of pencil on the water there underneath. And then we're going to have some grass and little bits of marshy areas here. So you're going to have fun with this. You're going to see how easy it is to create some beautiful trees, mountains, marshy waters here, like a little bit of a, an inlet with some water and, um, and some sky, some minimal sky here up top. We're going to keep that simple, the sky wash up here. But we have our pencil drawing done. So let's kind of start out here. First thing we want to do is I take a spritzer bottle and I spritz my palette. I want to wipe, you know, clean up the palette. I want to make sure I'm using fresh, clean colors as we do our next painting. I don't want to use all those colors that we mixed up before in our next painting. I want to make sure if you're doing another painting here, let's make sure we clean up all those colors off our palette so that the palette's nice and clean, fresh. I'll rinse, uh, I'll empty out my water bucket, put fresh crystal clear water in the water bucket. Maybe I'll take this uh, glass of water. We have some water here. I have a couple of water containers here. I just try to see if I can show you how I do the rinsing of the brush and the checking off of the water on a sponge, which is up top here. Okay, so now 
I'm going to use my uh, Simply Simmons number uh, 8. I think it's either an 8 or a um, 6 round brush. And we'll start that with the this painting here. So I rinse off my brush, tap off a little bit of the water on a sponge, and I'm going to start mixing my colors. So that's what I'm doing next. I'm trying to think to myself, how can I make this painting easier for myself. Let me mix my colors first. That's the first thing I'm thinking about. Let me mix my colors on my palette first. Then I can just have them all ready and then just go over here and do the painting and it's done. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to rinse off the brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and then we'll start making our greens up here. So we'll make some green, dark green and light green. with a little bit of water in there. So we'll mix up some water into the mix. So we have a little bit of water mixed in with our dark green and our light green. Looks good. Maybe we'll add a little bit of brown to that. Make it kind of an olivey green. That looks better. Okay, so now we have an olivey green up top. Then um, we're gonna use some brown, yellow, and orange. Brown, yellow, and orange. And that's going to give us a yellow ochre or a raw umber type feel. So you kind of see how that's a raw umber, yellow ochre kind of thing. Rinse off the brush, dry off a little bit of the water. So we have some of that, maybe some blue over here. I'll put some blue in there too. Some blue over here too, just to warm and cool, gold and blue. And then uh, what else do we have? Let's make a dark dark. So if we're going to make a dark dark, let's go with purple, blue, burnt umber, red. Purple, blue, brown touch of black. There we go. We got a nice dark. There we go. You add just a little touch of that black. This black in this palette here, this is the Oval 16, Prang Oval 16. You add a touch, just a little smidgen of that black into your washes and you'll see it gets really dark really quick. So that's great. We have a nice dark here we're going to use. And then, uh, what else do we, are we going to have? Oh, uh, well, yeah, we need blue for the sky. So let's rinse off our brush. We'll, do, we'll need some blue for the sky. Like that. Okay. And I think we have all our colors mixed up. Okay, so we're ready to go. Okay, so let's start out. Um, let's start out with um, kind of a glazing technique here. Let's get some water, fresh, clean water along the sky wash here and right down into the mountains like this. Let's use a glazing technique here and then right down into the water. So you take some fresh, clean water and just kind of Put it all on top of the, the whole paper. You don't have to put it everywhere, you know, just kind of a little bit heavier water up top. So you add more water up top on the, in the sky like that so that you can have more water flowing from the sky down like that. Okay, and then we're going to go with the blue sky wash like that. Just like that. Get some blue sky wash in there. Get a little bit of the yellow in there too. Gold. A little bit of that gold in the sky. And then right down into the into the uh, mountains, the greens. Get the greens going in the mountains. And don't worry about it because
And there you see, we have the glazing technique. A beautiful light wash across the whole paper. Now we let it dry 100%. So I'm hoping that you will um, follow along with me here as we're going. This is the glazing technique. You want to actually make sure that you're um, creating a beautiful sky wash up here. I would say keep it dark up top, at the very, very tippy top of your painting, like that. Take a little bit of that blue, put it down here in the water. And you are set. Okay, so now we have the glazing technique at work. Cover the whole paper with beautiful water color washes. Let it set. If you see any puddles of water, don't worry about it. Take a little bit of uh, paper towel or tissue. If you see some puddles of water in your washes, lift them up. See how I did that? You take your paper towel. You can even fold up your paper towel like this and you can make some clouds. Like that. Okay. Now you let that dry 100%. You can use a blow dryer right now. Blow dry it for like 10, oh not even two, three, five minutes at most. You blow dry this, it's 100% dry. You can go back in and we'll start creating our trees and a little bit of the details in the, in the foreground with the water. Um, if you wanna let it dry naturally, you have to wait about a couple hours. So I'm gonna use the blow dryer and we'll come right back and we'll start creating the trees and the foliage on the trees. Um, but if you wanna let it dry naturally, it is a couple hours. So let it dry a couple hours if you're not gonna use a blow dryer and then you can come back and work on it, okay? So I'm gonna take a break now, and then we'll come back, whether you're gonna wait for a couple hours or if you're gonna use a blow dryer and dry it off quick, it's up to you, but let's meet up again, whether you're, you know, so if you're gonna be letting it dry naturally, start this video back up in another couple hours, or if you're gonna use a blow dryer, well then please start back in five minutes with me and we'll keep working on this one, okay? Beautiful trees, marshes, water, mountains in the background, and a beautiful sky, which we're already done. And it's all the glazing techniques, so we're pretty much have most of the painting done right now. We'll just have to go over with a couple of darker washes and some lines for the trees, for the trunks and the limbs of the trees, and we'll be done. Okay, it's a lot of work, but you're gonna have fun. It's worth it. It's worth doing it, okay? All right, so stick with me here. We're gonna come back in five minutes because I'm using a blow dryer again. If you want to wait for a couple hours, come back in a couple hours and we'll, we'll begin again, okay? All right, we'll, we'll start back up in just a second. All right, I'm back and I uh, hope you're uh, having fun here along with us. We're going to do some beautiful trees here along the marshes and the mountains and the beautiful sky. We did a basically a glazing technique here where we did the whole paper. We covered the whole paper with beautiful sky washes of blue and then we did some gorgeous blue and greens here in the um, uh, mountainous areas and in the water. We're kind of ready to start um, working on our uh, trees. So let's do that. Let's uh, take some of our darker darks here. Orange, a little bit of the darker darks, brown, orange and red, a little bit of blue. And then we'll take our brush here and we're going to start doing the, the trunks of the trees. And I'm just going to kind of flick up the... Now you might need to do some finer brushes 
we might need to use our um, brush here that we have with our oval 16. That gives us some better, finer lines. I also will use, um, a lot of times, I like to use a needlepoint brush. So maybe we'll use our needlepoint brush too. That really can help to get finer lines. So here you can kind of see I'm trying to keep my lines thin like that. Then I'll take my needlepoint brush and I'm looking for that now. Sometimes uh, when we're working on our watercolor art, we need to get some custom brushes here and there. I tend to really advocate using some really custom brushes here and there. And this is one of them that I think is really important to have. This is a needlepoint brush. So you want to have your needlepoint brush because that really gives you these fine lines as you can see. Look, I'm really, look how fine those lines are. That's what you need for trees like this. You don't want to have fat looking limbs all the way up top here on the tops of these trees. So this is where the needlepoint brush comes in. You need to have this to get some better looking lines and things. And that's where I, I tend to uh, spend the money and just do it and get the brush, order it, and and then I have much better looking paintings if I don't And you can see this looks really good. Wow. Look at how good that looks. All right, so using the needlepoint brush, you can really enhance your paintings, you know, tenfold. So that's why I invest in, in uh, uh, art gear because it does make a big difference when you're painting. So now we're going to get some branches, but let's, before we do the branches, let's, let's start getting these We're going to do our reflections down in our into the water. So this is the water now here. Like that. Now we're going to go back to our Simply Simmons. And we're going to get our um, greens and browns here. Brown, green, orange. So we have some olivey green with a little bit of gold. So let's add some yellow to that. And some orange. Let's see what we can do here. Now we take our brush, our Simply Simmons brush, and then what you want to do is you want to hold it on the side and you want to scrub in a circular fashion to get your your uh, your uh, leaf leaf forms on your trees. So I'm going to do circular patterns with my Simply Simmons. I got some of that yellow ochre color with a little bit of green. And let's see how we do here. So let's do some circular patterns and the thing is you don't want to you don't want to cover everything you want to leave it hit and miss see how I did that little bits here and there and I think right away you can kind of see how good that looks and then we'll do over here same thing circular motions like that And 
and I think that looks fine. Then I'll take some more of that color with a little bit of water and then splash on there too. Put some splashes on there for leaves and kind of that feeling of um, some leaf forms, fine speckles of leaf forms like that, like that. That's good. Then we take that same bit of leaf forms here And this is the water, so we just kind of, if it's the reflections in the water, you just want to do it little bits at a time here, not too much. Like that. Add some of, the, again, the leaf forms in the water. Then we take the our fresh, clean water. Maybe a little bit of blue and green. Blue and green for the water. And just go right across like that. And then splash on some water. Then we get some brown, touch of black, purple and blue. And we'll do the mountains in the back here. And then just blend, blend the mountains down. And then I'll do some darker darks along the mountain bottoms here, the bushes along the trunks of the trees. You can do some like that. So you have some dark darks here. We use our dark darks. Like that. Splash along there too. And a little bit of darks here and there, up top on the mountains. Blend that down just so you have a good line for the mountain range. And then you have some gorgeous, like this. Then you do some lines, vertical lines like this. Then you might let it dry a little bit and then you can scratch in some, you can do some scratching in for the, for the shoreline there like that. So that's really basically it. And now you have some gorgeous trees.
and I splash in some darker leaves with the brush. And then you can also use some uh, paper towel or tissue to lift up a little bit of the splashing if you need to. If you over splash, sometimes you'll over splash areas. No problem, you quick, you grab your tissue or your paper towel and you lift up some of those over splashes. But you can see how I did the shoreline with some thumb scratches with my nail. And then you can also go back in and get some darker darks and just do some some of the tree trunks and limbs like that in your water. So you have some water there. And I think that looks fine. You, you really have seen how you can get some beautiful trees in here, mountains, uh, some beautiful water in the foreground. You take some of the tree trunks and limbs and put them down into the water here. We did some nice water effects. You can scratch again with some nail scratches across. And you have some really nice effects for your uh, for your tree trunks and your limbs going down into the water. Let's call this a day. So all right, you have your you know, you can do some finger painting here too. Some greens and some dark darks. Just to get a little more like that. We can do a little bit of, you know, like that. Gives it a little more texture, a little more interesting a look. And uh, I think that's perfect. Okay, so let's let that be as it is. So now we've got two compositions done. Let's keep working. Let this dry, take a break, and then we'll come back and we'll start our third and fourth composition here on Extreme Beginners. The key is you want to keep working, doing lots of compositions one after the next. This way you don't get bogged down on one, you know, composition. And then if it doesn't go right, you kind of get like, oh my gosh, I just, you know, my painting didn't come out good. No problem. You just, you're going to the next one and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. That's why I do this uh, Extreme Beginners uh, series paintings where I kind of try to create maybe three or four different paintings uh, in one video. So you kind of see, you just work from one to the next, try to you know capture the, the look you're looking for, and uh, you'll find that you really, you'll, you'll find that you will, will get the result you need uh, after a few tries, okay? All right, so let's get started in just a second with our next painting. So when I come back, I'll remove all this and we'll move our painting around a little bit and we'll get our other portions of our paper ready to go for the next two paintings. Okay, so are you ready? Are you ready to go for the next two paintings? I hope so. All right, this is the challenge. You've got two completed. We're going to do another two. And uh, we're going to have lots of fun, okay? And I, I always say, too, if you haven't subscribed yet and you're a beginner, hey, this is the place to be uh, on my channel here. We're going to do tons of new, fresh, exciting paintings with watercolor. If you're a beginner, this is the beginner's style paintings. You're going to try to work quickly, get one composition, get to the next one, and keep working. And uh, keep get, you know getting on to the next painting and not getting... Uh, uh, you know, kind of like stuck on one painting, you know, that's the old one painting syndrome. You don't want to have that. You want to just keep moving on to many paintings as you go. Okay. So we're going to come right back in just a second. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe below on the right hand side. The right hand side is the subscribe button, the little red button there on the right. This means you'll just, the next time you open up YouTube, you'll see my videos there waiting for you to click on and you can join along and start painting again. Okay. All right. So let's take a break and we'll come right back and we'll get started again with our next composition. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. All right. We're getting started again. We're going to create a beautiful, um, small, 
uh, cottage in the countryside. Let's do it. First thing I'm going to do is take a look and see, all right, halfway on my paper is about here. This is my rectangle here. Again, we're going to kind of just uh, kind of outline our rectangle that we're working within. We're working in a portrait style like this. And then let's say, all right, we're going to create a um, cottage. So let's make it halfway for maybe the uh, distant uh, trees and things. Let's make our cottage down here a little bit lower. And let's do our cottage like this. So we're going to have the we're going to have our cottage like this, and then we're going to have the, like this, like so. And then let's have our window here, we'll have another window here, and maybe we'll have a window there, and another window here. And then we'll have maybe a chimney over here. Like that. We'll have a chimney. And we'll have some trees over here. Another tree over here, maybe. Okay, so we have a little bit of a. Okay, so we're just going to do a simple cottage. And you can kind of see that I didn't do anything too fancy. And, uh, you know, I didn't do anything to perfection. Okay, maybe I made my roof a little bit. I could maybe do a little better on my roof there, on the eaves of my roof. So let's see here. Let's do this. Let's make it a little bit better there. Okay. But I think that looks pretty good. And we have a chimney back over here on the other side of the roof, a chimney on the other side of the roof. And then maybe, well, let's do another little bit of cottage over here. We'll do some more. And this is back a little bit in the distance over here. And there's some more bushes and trees over here. And there's a door there. And maybe there's a window over here, like that. Okay, that's perfect. Let's stick with that. And then again, let's do our due diligence. Let's take our spritzer bottle, spritz our paints here to get our paints a little bit moist again. Then let's spritz our palette. Let's clean up our palette. We don't want to keep working with the same muddy colors that we've been working with. So then it's really simple. I take my paper towel after I spritz the palette and then I just that's all. I take some paper towel like that, clean up the palette. A little bit of a wash on there is not a big deal, but as long as I have the main portion of all the paints up and off there, off the palette, we're good to go. So now let's get started again. And um, we're going to use again this, I'm going to use the Simply Simmons watercolor brush. What I'll do is I'll empty my water here in my glass to get some fresh clean water. And I use the orange juice container with fresh clean water. I have that always on the side of my studio here. So when I'm working in my studio, I always have fresh clean water on hand at all times so that I have that beautiful crystal clear water on hand at all times ready to go. So let's get started here. We're going to, we're going to have our sponge and our water here. So we have our glass and our sponge. So glass of fresh clean water. We dry off a little bit of the water with our sponge. 
and then we're going to do this a la prima. So we're going to take brown, brown here, and then some green. So we're going to use both of our greens and some brown, a little bit of orange. And I think that looks good. And then we're going to get our roof color in there. And we're going to do this a la prima. So we're going to do this a la prima. Let's do a little bit of blue over here. So we don't want to go all warm. Let's do some cool colors too. Let's do some blue. Wow, doesn't that look good? Our roof color, gorgeous. Then we'll do a little bit of red and orange over here. A little bit of red and orange, that's going to be for our chimney, like that. And we're going to use some red and orange too for our facade of our house. So this is our beautiful house here, cottage. And I just added red and orange with a little bit of the mix of the brown and the green. We'll try to keep it all the same. And there we go. And then we just do that. Like that. More green. And brown. And some orange and red. Some blue. And then we're going to do a little shadowing colors there, like that. And some greens. Brown, greens, some olive green, like that. We're doing this a la prima. Prima is mixing everything beautifully at one time. Maybe a little bit of a blue, brown, blue, purple. And some red too. Brown, purple, red, blue. To get a little bit of a dark, maybe a touch of black. And let's do that. Let's do some black here. And let's do some black over here too. Try to counterbalance things. So we'll do some black over here for some bushes. And if you want to make sure that you don't block anybody from walking through your composition, you leave a little bit of a light spot here, like that. So somebody, if they're looking at your painting, they can kind of feel like they can walk through over there on the left, right side. Like that. Okay, look how good that looks. And we'll take some blue, purple, blue, purples and blues. Like that, purples and blues. And let's do our windows.
like that. And a little bit of the And what I'm doing is I'm just sort of adding some of the same colors that we used up on the roofs. And I think what I'll do is I will add some darker darks to the roof up here. like that and now that we have some we're painting a la prima let's uh, do some more greens here so we're doing some tree trees here with a little bit of blue okay so some trees there and then some more trees up here too so let's do that with a little bit of blue there we go gorgeous we have some trees Splashes too. Add some splashes to your trees. Like that. Leave lots of white paper though in between all the splashes and scrubs that you do. Do some finger painting too if you like. Blot up some splashes if they if you don't like them. If you add some splashes and they don't look great, no big deal. Okay. There we go. We have some trees. Okay, so now we're doing a beautiful cottage. You can't go wrong with this. Okay. If you have a little bit of an issue with some water f infiltrating into another section, just blot it up like that. Same thing too if it's blotting down, or if it's infiltrating down, lift it up a little bit. Don't worry about it. Okay, we'll fix that later. Okay, so you have your roofs, your chimney. We're going to do a little chimney pots there. And then again, we're going to use our, um, well, before we do anything else, let's get our sky wash in. But before we do our sky wash, let's dry this. So I'm going to use my blow dryer. At this point here, you're going to want to let this dry 100%, either two hours um, you can let this sit for two hours and then come back and paint, or you can use a blow dryer and come back in five minutes or ten minutes. Choice is up to you. You're the artist. You have to figure out how you're going to create your paintings and if you're going to use different uh, techniques and methods to uh, make your life easier. I find that my life is easier if I have a blow dryer next to my art table here when I'm creating videos. I can dry this off real fast and come right back and start painting again. So... Um, you might want to do the same thing. You might want to have, if you have a blow dryer at your place, you know, you can use it, work, you know, have it nearby when you're ready to paint. You can use your blow dryer to dry off washes. 
or if you want to let it dry naturally, you, of course, you can let it dry a couple of hours. So let's come back in about five minutes or a couple hours if you're going to let it dry naturally, and then we'll pick up again. Okay, all right. So next thing we're going to do, once this dries 100%, we're going to do some sky wash. We're going to do some trunks of trees and limbs of trees here. And I think once we do that, we're going to have a pretty much a, a finished painting. Okay, all right. So we'll come right back. Okay, so now we're back, and um, we, I just used my blow dryer. Perfect. Everything is dry, 100%. Next thing I'm going to do is sky wash. So I mix some sky wash here. Blue and blue, like that, maybe a little bit of green in there, okay. And I'm just going to get the sky wash on there, scrub it on there, darker up top, then I just lighten it up on down. You all see that? Use some water to flow it on down. Until it's really light. Okay, mix up a little bit of darker darks. Okay, I just make a little bit of darker darks up top on the sky wash. Fresh clean water, I splash it on, on down there. And I let it all flow on down. Then I get a little bit of orange. There, I put a little bit of on orange on there, and that's about it. Orange, orange. Okay. Then the best thing to do next is. Take a little bit of tissue or paper towel and then blot a little bit. Like that. Blot where your trees are. You don't want too much water flooding the whole painting. So you blot up the water that's flowing on down at the bottom of the painting where the trees are and the roof is. And that's all. Just kind of blot up a little bit of paint there. And then you have a nice combination of darks and lights. Sometimes I'll use my finger and do a little finger painting here, like that. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is very simply let this dry 100% and we'll do a little bit of uh, twigs and limbs and tree trunks. And, th and then I think we'll be 100% complete. So we will have to come back one more time. Um, and then I will do a little more darker up here. That always looks good if you can get some darker darks up top on the top of the painting like that. Sky is always darker up top and then as it trails off in the distance like this it's a little bit It's a little bit uh, lighter, but it's darker up top, like that. Okay. All right. Some splashes of fresh, clean water, just to flow some water on down. OK, 
Okay, once you get that water flowing on down, then you can always gently blot up a little bit too as you go. You're always looking to have fun with your water color and your water and your washes flowing around on your painting so that you can be in control of it like that. And that looks good. All right, so let's come back. Once this dries, you can use a blow dryer or you can wait a couple hours and then we'll finish up with some twigs and limbs and tree trunks for these trees and I think we'll have a completed painting. Here, another composition. Three of four. We're going to do one more after this. Let's keep going. Let's keep working and uh, creating more compositions so that we can really get lots of work done. And uh, we don't want to get hung up on one painting. We want to do many paintings, many compositions. And that's the key when you're just starting out. If you're an extreme beginner, you want to do lot. Lots of paintings, lots of compositions, keep moving from one to the next. And as you do that, you'll find that you won't get caught up in that mindset of, oh my God, I ruined a painting. I didn't do a good job on this painting. Well, it's okay. You're just going to the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one. Okay, <laughs> let's come back in just a second. We're going to start our fourth painting. But before we start our fourth painting, our fourth composition, we're going to finish this one here. I'm going to blow dry this quick. And we'll do some tree trunks and tree limbs to finish it off. And you'll see how beautiful that looks when we do that. Okay. All right. So we'll be right back. Okay. So we're really, we're moving right along here. Let's finish up with some beautiful tree trunks and tree limbs. I'll use my um, needlepoint brush here. We'll get into some of the darks. Maybe I'll do some more details too in the roofs. So I'll use some browns, greens oranges and reds. Okay, so I'm going to try to get this uh, a little bit of this uh, details here on the windows and doors. Okay, and we got the chimney. There we have the chimney. Uh, okay, now we're going to take some of that same colors brown, brown, touch of black greens, orange, and that gives us a nice some really uh, good uh, tree trunks and tree branches and tree limbs so you can kind of see that Pick up a little bit of the tree, uh, tree, uh, tree branch and tree limb colors, which is that black, brown, greens, some oranges, reds, kind of like a mixture of colors there. And then we just and as long as you get a couple little indications of some branches and tree limbs and things like that, you're fine. And over here, it's very light, but let's. We're going to do those light indications of the tree branches again, the tree limbs. I, I can also blot a little bit, tap and blot with some what just some water. If you blot and tap with a little bit of water, it works good. It kind of blends things together. OK, 
Okay. And some darks. Then I take some paper towels or tissues, either one, and you can always lift up a little bit too. Okay, you can do some darks here and there with a little bit of finger painting and uh, then you can go back in with some darks and you can get some more. So I'm going to go in and get my roof. I'm going to reestablish my uh, e the uh, gable end of my roof here. Like that. And that is good. Let's call this a day. We have our beautiful cottage here. Um, maybe a little bit of a, you know, we can do a little more. Like that. You can do a couple little more. Uh, bits of green, a little bit of green uh, leaf forms. Couple splashes. You can take some of those green leaf forms and splash some splashes on there. And then if you don't like the splashes and you say, oh, I went overboard with the splashes, you can blot up a couple of the splashes. They come right up. They lift right up off the paper. So never be afraid of adding splashes. You can lift them right off the paper, just like I'm doing now. And there you have it. So you have some really nice So your trees blend right in with your tree uh, your rooftop. And that's what you would just call um, uh, lost and found edges. So when you're painting watercolor, one of your biggest advantages that you have is tying in different areas, one to the next, with the same tonal values, the same lights and darks. So if you can take these trees and then blend them right into the rooftop as if they're all blending together with the same kind of dark and lightness. So you can see the dark and light of the trees are blending right into the rooftop of this beautiful cottage. That looks really fantastic and over here too. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of that red in the foreground. And then maybe a little bit of dark over here. At the bottom of the painting. Like that. Okay, we are completed with this painting. If we could do anything else, maybe, 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 we could take a little bit of 
titanium white and add a little bit of smoke to our chimney. Like that. That could be really interesting, adding a little bit of smoke. Um, you could add a little bit of black to that too. Okay, I consider this completed, a good painting. And let's get started on our fourth painting. <laughs> We're gonna have fun here. This is the third painting of four paintings. And again, if you're an extreme beginner, you're gonna love these videos. We're doing not one, not two, not three, four paintings. You're going to do all four. And by the time you're done with your fourth painting, you're going to be amazed at how much uh, progress you've made. Okay, so don't worry about it. If your first painting doesn't come out good, get started with your second. If your second doesn't come out good, get started with your third painting. Maybe your third painting is going to come out perfect. And then if not, you're doing the fourth painting and that fourth painting is going to come out so good and beautiful, you're just going to be amazed at it. And you're going to say, wow, am I happy I stuck with Chris here and did four paintings, not one, not two, not three, four paintings in one tutorial, one video. All right, let's get back to business in just a second. We're going to take this, let it dry, and we're going to get started with our fourth painting. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, let's get started with our fourth painting. Let's do some flowers, why not? Let's do a little quick uh, vase with our, um, uh, we'll start out and we'll just say, well, let's make our vase about one third. So if we have, if we take our, if we take our, our rectangle here, our vertical rectangle, which would be a portrait style painting and we break it into thirds. We could go one-third, two-thirds, and three-thirds. So this is like one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds. Let's say a third, a third up from the bottom. Let's make a little vase here. Okay, we'll make a little vase here like so. Like that, that's our vase. And then let's do some flowers. Let's do some pink and red flowers like this and we'll just do two like so and then maybe we'll do another couple buds up here like this maybe another one over here another bud or two over here and maybe another one over here like that and that's all very simple a vase A couple of flowers here, could be some roses. Let's make them roses. And then a couple of rosebuds up here and then some uh, green leaf forms too. Okay, so we're gonna have some green leaf forms here. Like this, like this. And that's it. Good. Okay, I'm going to use my Simply Simmons number six paintbrush, fresh clean water. And what I'll do is um, to start with, let me create the uh, flower colors. Now we have um, the situation where a lot of times we might say, oh, I don't need to clean my palette. Yes, you do. So you take some quick, do some quick spritzing of water on your palette, spritz, spritz your colors too. While you're doing that, hit your colors with some spritz of water, like that. Get your paper towels ready, and then just 
do a quick and easy lift up of colors off your palette so that your palette's nice and clean. And now you have a clean palette ready to go with, so you have some, mix some fresh clean colors and you're not gonna have a problem with muddy looking washes. And then we're gonna get ready to go here. So let's do some blue for the vase. Let's make our vase blue. Like that, maybe some purple purple down here, like that. So you have some purple, some blue, a little bit of orange, just to give a little bit of variety to your cool colors. You know, if you make some cool colors, it's always nice to have some warm colors in there, some orange, some orange in there to warm up that cool color as you make your cool colors. Okay, so you have some blue and purple with a little bit of orange in both to just to add a little bit of warmth to both colors. You leave that the warmth, the orange over here on the side. And then uh, you're going to do some greens up here. So you're going to make, make your beautiful greens up here like that. Add some browns to your greens to make them a little bit uh, warmer. So some it gets it looking like an olive green. You olive olive green look looks beautiful. You can never go wrong with an olive green. It's sort of like a nice in between kind of green. It's not too cool. It's not too warm. It kind of just looks good. You can add some yellows too, some golds, some yellows to, to make a little bit of a lighter green like that, a fresher green. And then I think you have it. And then of course. We're going to do some red roses, I think, here. We're going to do some beautiful roses here. So we just put some reds and oranges in there, like that. And then we have all our colors laid out on our palette. So that's, as a beginner, your best bet is to mix your colors first in your palette. Get them in there. Get them in there. So look at your whatever reference you're using, if you're using photographs, videos, if you're working from my videos, my tutorials, pictures from watercolor uh, books, like some, you know, uh, art books, like if you're working from art books for your paintings, um, uh, whatever you're using for your, um, if you're using real, 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 actually flowers that you might have, you might have a vase of flowers you're working from, whatever you're working from, look at the, look at the subject matter you're looking at, whether it's photographs again, you're working from your phone, from your iPad, from your home computer, from your, uh, you might be working from your TV screen, you might be working from a um, magazine, art book, whatever it is, look at all the colors, get them out on your palette, mix them, say, okay, what am I seeing there? Okay, I'm seeing a green, mix your greens. Oh, I'm seeing a red, mix your reds in there into your palette, get all your colors mixed first, and then now that you have all your colors mixed, then you're, you're really set. You don't have to, you're not going to stress at all. You're just going to go in and start doing your painting and have all the colors you need right there as you go. And that really will help you tremendously. Because if you're trying to mix colors and blend colors and do all of that while you're trying to do your painting, you're going to find that your painting is going to start to dry. And then you're going to have funny looking uh, splotches of colors. You're, you know, it won't look as good as if you can just go in there right away and get your painting done. So let's do that. Okay, so let's start right away. Let's get our reds in there for our flowers. And let's start to do that. Let's get our, and I'm just gonna do this fun, free, loose. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Okay, there we go. I splash a little bit of water on there just so that loosens that wash up a little bit like that. Then we'll go right in with our greens. Let's mix our greens right in there. And 
there we go. I'm just going to start to get all my greens in there, my leaf forms. Like that. Rinse off the brush, go back in, get some red, beautiful red washes, and that's going to be our buds for our other, other, uh, couple splashes like that. And then our blues. Let's get our blues in there. And let's get our blues and purples up in here too. Don't don't uh, ever underestimate blending your colors around the whole painting. You need to blot up a little bit of paint as you're working. You can do that just so you can get some more wash on there. Like that. Okay, and then let's do the uh, background here. This is the table. So you have some white tablecloth here. And you're just going to blend this up in here for the background. And you just get a little bit of wash over here. Like that. And then you work your colors in there. Like that. Maybe a little bit of blue. Like that. That's it. Looks good. You have some shadows for the bottom of the vase. Some splashes here and there for some interesting uh, texture. You might blot up a few if you don't like them. You know, sometimes you might splash some wash onto your paper and you say, oh, I'm not sure I like that. You can always lift it up a little bit. 
like that. But for the most part, that does look pretty good. And uh, I think we have this completed too. And as you can see, I've mixed around my colors everywhere. And if you want to add some more exciting color there, certainly do that. You can add some more highly um, chromatic color. I'm going to try to make this uh, rose here a little um, larger so that we have kind of like a con you know like a contrast of um, large and small. So this one's a little smaller. This rose over here, and this one's a little larger. I think that looks better now that I did that. And that's it. Perfect. Uh, painting of some roses in a vase. I put some red in the uh, other parts of the painting so that the, the red blends in beautifully with the rest of the painting. Like that. Even up here too. Get a, we get a little bit of red up here in the wash up in the above here. And that looks perfect. A little bit of red too in the like that. Okay. So now we've done four paintings. All of them you've had fun. You've went from one painting to the next. And uh, that's the, the key to watercolors, keep painting, keep working on new paintings. If one painting comes out a little bit, you know, questionable, you don't think it's coming out good, you've had some problems with some washes, no problem. You put that one aside, you put it in a folder, you start another one, and you keep working from one painting to the next. And the same thing here, when you're working on my channel with all of us here together, you're just working every weekend on your paintings. Maybe you're doing a little practice on your drawings, your, your pencil drawings in the, during the week, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day. You do some pencil drawings, you get, you get up on your skills with drawing. And then on the weekends, you're getting together with us here and we're doing some paintings and you're trying out your paints, you're um, working with your uh, brushes, your uh, palette, your colors, you're having a good time with that, learning about mixing colors, how to put down washes, how to get some really nice um, uh, glazing technique or a la prima techniques going, and then you'll be all set. You'll be learning all of the things you need to learn in watercolor, all your methods and your techniques, and um, you'll have a really fun and enjoyable time with watercolor. So stick with us here. Again, I always mention subscribe on the right-hand side here below on the screen here if you look right below on the right hand side of the screen you see a subscribe button hit subscribe this way you'll stick with us here week after week month after month and year after year as we paint you'll get better and better as you go watercolor is not easy takes time but if you're sticking with us week after week and again month after month and even year after year you will get better you will make 
better and more beautiful paintings as you go. Um, so stick with us here. Keep working with us and uh, we'll have a fun time. And if you subscribe, that means you'll be working along with us and you'll be notified uh, when we're making new videos every week. Uh, okay, so stick with us here. Enjoy the journey of watercolor. And uh, again, happy painting. And we'll see you on the next video. And again, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for the beautiful comments, everybody. Thanks again for purchasing my new book. I have my new book out, Chris Petrie, Methods for Success. You can look it up on uh, Amazon, Chris Petrie, and you just type in, uh, you know, watercolor book or methods for success, and you'll find my book there. And uh, that, that'll be a great, also a companion for you. Uh, when you're uh, working in watercolor, you'll, you'll see all the palettes I use, the paint colors, my brushes, my pencils, all of my art gear I cover in my book, as well as tons of paintings. I have really like uh, tremendous amounts of paintings in my book that are um, something that you can work from and actually uh, just paint the paintings that you see in my book. Keep working at them and you will, again, improve tremendously in your watercolor uh, art. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for coming by. Thanks again for all your support, all your love, all the great comments in the comments section. I look forward to always uh, touching base with you in the comments section as well. And okay, we'll see you soon. All right, bye-bye.